have an obsession to build a world that makes sense. We want our city to be credible before making a game. We call it a world first approach. It's really important uh, for us to create a city that feels alive. We speak a lot in Watch Dogs 2 about the world being a simulation, and that's really the, the fundamental aspect of it. We wanted the world to be non-player centric, meaning it will live without you being there. And once you go there, then you, it's a place to discover and live in and play. The world of Watch Dogs 2 was a big challenge because it's uh, twice as big as uh, Chicago was. So we have uh, the Marine County, more organic uh, at the north. We have Oakland, we have San Francisco, and uh, also Silicon Valley. Each region has its own flavor. So San Francisco is the more colorful mission district, is more Mediterranean revival. The variety with the architecture in San Francisco is uh, huge because it's the quintessence of each district. One thing that we, we did in Watch Dogs 2 to continue to push our ability to convey a real world as we, we did a lot more research. We send uh, many, many people just to scout the area to make sure what we're doing is credible. We went there several times. We had teams going there for us, doing interviews as well. Dig into certain people of San Francisco that we thought were interesting, just to inspire ourselves about the mindset. We really wanted to hit the vibe, the major landmarks, the feeling. We took a lot of pictures. We did a movie. We visit some secret place. We work a lot with street art, the murals, the graffiti. We went as far as uh, sending a guy with a GoPro on his helmet to, you know, to go through all the streets so we get the vibe. You need to have the vibe, the people in it. When you're really in San Francisco, if you go downtown San Francisco early in the morning, uh, you're gonna feel like there's not much people. Some oboes are in there, they're very colorful. This time around, I think people will feel like not only the place is beautiful, but the personalities of the people around will relate with uh, the people who understand how the vibe of San Francisco and the Bay Area works. One of the things I wanted to push forward in Watch Dogs 2 is make sure that the world would offer many different stories, many different things to discover. The whole progression of the game is about world exploration. If you're walking in Watch Dogs 2 in the city of San Francisco, you don't know what you're going to find and you don't know what type of gameplay challenge will be there. But if you start digging around and looking at people, digging into secrets through hacking, then you can find missions, certain stories. So there's big operations you do where you're gonna reveal the truth on something big and have impacts and get followers. But you can also do the same thing and the same loop with smaller operations. And these will dig into more like specific subject matters, like exploring gentrification in San Francisco and tied with technology are dig into certain mysteries and interestingly inspired stories about hacking and these kind of stuff. And on top of that, then you can do the activities. So e-cart racing, sailboat racing, drone challenges, dirt bike as well. If you open your phone, you can do ScoutX, which is basically visit the landmarks of the Bay Area. So you're exploring the world and now you're finding stories that you can do. The NPCs in Watch Dogs 2 are closer to a simulation, meaning if you don't exist, they will be doing things together without you actually you know, needing to interact. So they can fight, they can bicker, they can interact, and that can be used uh, to take advantage in gameplay moments. Certainly is a living world to wander around in Watch Dogs 2, and I think that uh, when players start messing around with the people around, not only it's a living world, but it's an interactive world. You know, like being able to wander around in an open world is a place where players want to get surprised. And I think Watch Dogs with Seamless Online have a, an extra way to surprise players, like by other players. We really wanted to include co-op because you're part of DeadSec. You can basically explore the whole world in co-op. Being with your buddies, doing things with them, you know, partaking in stories about DeadSec was really important, so co-op is fundamental to that. And it's all over the place, right? It's not just co-op and, and missions. That's new and it's great, but it's also bringing back the invasions, but with the new mechanics. We have a new form of invasion we call the bounty. So we have something called the DeadSec events. 
So we're really excited about how, how those possibilities can fit because in the end, even after the narrative has been consumed and all of these things, the simulation in the system stays. So the best stories that comes about Watch Dogs 2 become stories about players because it's always the case. It's the ideas of millions of players combined together that blows our minds. Available November 15, 2016. Pre-order and get the bonus Zodiac Killer mission and outfit.